Hey everyone, this is Greg Hendricks, and in this video we're going to go over how to use animation curves within Unity. And what an animation curve allows you to do is take a curve that you create and use this value to drive certain behaviors within Unity. So basically we're going to sample from a 0 to 1 value, and you can sample where on this curve that value is. So in this case, if we sample 0.1 on the curve, it will give us this value here. And if I right click and edit key, that value be 0.8. So let me delete this and we'll go over more about how to use this in a moment. So first of all, I have this scene already set up where I have two targets, target A and target B, which are these cubes. And I have my animation curve example script on this uh, sphere. And we're just going to alert the sphere between this sphere, or this uh, target and this target. So let me just open up this curve. And let's make two public variables for the transform for target A and transform target B. And then we already have the animation curve in here. So to create an animation curve, you just uh, give it the animation curve type and give it the name. And if we go back to Unity, that will give you this right here by default. And you can just click it to open up the big view of it and edit the curves from there. All right, so let's create a lerp offset vector. And I'll show you what we're going to do with this in a second. And let's create a lerp time. Uh, float value. And this will be uh, how long it takes to go from point A to point B. And then let's create a private float timer. And this will hold the time for uh, as we lerp from point A to point B. So let's take our timer and store time.delta time into here. And then if the timer is greater than our alert time, which is how long we want it to move, uh, we'll just make the timer equal to alert time. And then we'll do a alert ratio. And we'll take the timer and divide it by the total time. Basically the current time divided by the total time, and this will give us a ratio from zero to one. And we can use that to drive our alert so let's lerp this transform position, which is the, the sphere. So we'll do vector three dot lerp, and we'll say target a dot position to target b dot position, and we'll use our lerp ratio, which is a zero to one value. And let's hit save and go back to Unity, and go to the sphere, and we'll plug in our targets. So right now we're not using the lerp curve or the lerp offset and let's just hit play and we'll see. Uh, so the sphere starts here and over three seconds it'll lerp over to here. And let's say, I don't know, the designer put a capsule or something in the middle and now it's messing up our lerp. So now it's going to collide with this object. So. But we like that it starts here and eventually ends up here over three seconds. But now we have a problem where we don't want this to collide with this object in the middle. And to fix that, we can use an animation curve to help uh, give more complexity to our movement, but also have it very easily be uh, very easily be tunable and. Uh, Edible by driving it with this animation curve here. And what we're going to do is take this lerp offset. So let's say I say lerp offset of three. And let me make this curve here. So you notice, first of all, we have these presets down here. So I'm just going to click the left one, and this will give us a preset where it's a flat line at, uh, with the value of one. So if you right click anywhere on the curve, you can say add key. And then you just uh, marquee or single click the curves, uh, the control points, and you can move them down. So let me just hold shift and grab these two and just kind of move them down. 
to here. And you can hold control and kind of snap a little bit or hold shift and you'll um, constrain up and down axis. So let's at least pull it down a little bit. And if you want to make these as that, you can click it and right click and say edit key. And now you can change the time and the value. So I want this to start be at zero. And if you grab this one, right click it, let's go edit key. I want this to be at time one, uh, value zero as well. And you can grab these tangent handles and kind of edit your curve that way. So basically, uh, we're going to multiply this curve by our offset. So when it starts, it starts at zero. And as it gradually gets to the middle here, it will multiply it by a value of one because this is the value one right in the middle. And it's not right in the middle, so let me just right click and click in here. And I can say 0 0.5 and snap that right in the middle there. So it'll lerp up to this offset here and gradually fall back down to zero. So let's implement this real quick. And it's pretty simple to do. Um, let's create a vector three. We'll call this um, position offset. And TAT says the value of the curve. You just use the curve name, which is lerp curve, which is up here. And do dot evaluate. And we'll give it the lerp ratio. And we'll multiply it by the lerp offset. So what we're doing here, our, our LERP ratio is going from zero to one. So we're saying evaluate at time zero and uh, as this grows bigger and bigger, it'll eventually evaluate from zero to one as well. Let's save that. And then we multiply it by our LERP offset. So our LERP ratio is going from zero to one. Then we're saying evaluate the curve's value from zero to one. So we'll get this uh, motion when we click play. And since we're multiplying it by a slurp offset, when it gets to the middle, it'll be three, because that's what we have here. We'll multiply it by one. So let's hit play and see what we got. All right. Uh, one second. Let me just add the lerp, uh, the position offset to our actual lerp position, which we got to do. So position offset. So we just forgot to lerp, add it to actual position. So we're going to lerp like we've been doing before, and then we just add our new offset position to it. Let's get save and play one more time. And now we get our um, somewhat, uh, you know, more complex motion. You can, t you can kind of tell it's following just our our very um, hilly kind of curve that we made. But let's say you want to add more complication to it. Uh, it's very easy to do. Like, basically, you'll follow whatever um, shape this curve is. So, if you want it to be uh, kind of wait a little bit and then gradually uh, all of a sudden go up right before it gets to the middle and kind of fine tune it from here, you can easily just uh, add some more keys to it, shape it so it waits a little bit and then it'll jump over it. Um, so, it's a really useful tool to know about as you create, uh, I don't know, procedural animations and stuff like that. You can make really complicated seem, uh, looking procedural animation stuff, but it's actually behind the scenes very easy to edit and, uh, you know, kind of art direct on how you want it to move. And let's go, I'll show you one more example just to show you just another thing on how to use this for different stuff. So let's um, let's just kill all this stuff and we'll start from scratch. So what we're going to do is, and let me get rid of this, get rid of this, and I'll keep our target B in our sphere. So what we want is as the sphere gets closer to the uh, cube, we'll change the sphere color to red. As it gets closer, I mean, we'll control that with a lerp curve, or with a not a lerp curve, but a animation curve. Just to give you another example of how we can use something like a animation curve to help us out. So let's do uh, another transform target. This will hold our target B, and we'll need animation curve. 
and let's name this anim curve and let's see uh, public float will need a min distance so this is the distance um, it needs to reach before it'll start transitioning into the red color and then to change color you use a render so do render and we'll just name it render render okay and then let's create a start function and we'll take our render and say get component render and then we'll say render um, dot material dot color and we'll start off with just a black color all right so let's just save that jump over back to unity real quick and let's just plug in our um, target all right so now let's fill out the update function let's take we'll need the distance let's do vector 3 dot distance we'll take our current position from the sphere and we'll compare that to the target position so now we get the distance between them between the two and let's let's just do a log just to show you the color value itself just so we can see what we're doing uh, and let me just grab the materials color just so we can see it for sure when it's changing to red or not and then we just do if distance is less than the min distance so now it's within our target range let's do a new float we'll call this red color and we'll sample our animation curve so again we'll just evaluate so you want to sample from a zero to one value and uh, so we'll take one minus the distance divided by the min distance um, and this will give us uh, so we want to go from zero to one, but it's going to start off at one. If we take this uh, calculation here, if we multiply or divide the distance by min distance, uh, it will pop into one and gradually go down to zero. But we actually want to start at zero and go up to one. So we actually mo uh, minus uh, subtract it from one. That way, when it starts off at one, it actually uh, you do one minus one in that case and then as it gradually goes up it'll go from zero to one so if that doesn't make sense i recommend uh you know just also do like a debug log of this here and try it out yourself or just do this and see what it gives you um actually while we're at it might as well just do it here just kind of see what i'm talking about um and just name this well let's name it that and we can actually see while we're looking at it here all right so now let's take the color again and we'll say new color and we'll give it the red color and just leave the other two at zero let's hit save and go here And let's go to our sphere and let's just do a default linear from zero to one uh, curve here and let's hit play and i'll hold control shift and hit c to bring up the console so you see what's going on so you see once we enter our range there you see how the distance is at one and it's going to gradually get to zero So that's why when it gets to here, we actually want to go from zero to one, not from one to zero, which is what's happening right now. So that's why we subtract one and uh, we well, we subtract this from one. So right now when it's at one, it starts at zero and then um, this will gradually go up to one. Which you can you can see here with the red color. So the red will start at zero and go up to one. So right now we just have like a linear gradual blend 
but let's let's just do like a, a bigger range here so what what's cool is we're driving this through a animation curve so you can just add a key and say I don't know like oh I don't want it to do anything for a while at first and all of a sudden at the end I want it to just blend up into red let's just kind of keep it the same you can even add more keys just make sure you kind of mess with it all right so for now it's going to be uh, stay black for a while and then blend up even though we have our setup saying with the distance we can control overall if we change our mind later very easily just changing a uh, curve we can edit how our scripts will behave and there's tons of different uses for animation curves I'm just giving you two examples here like there's a lot more you can do with it than just lerping and colors and stuff like that I'm sure once you need one you'll at least know about them and at least have knowledge have uh, you know knowledge of them so you can kind of help you out doing complex things so you could, could even um, like just go crazy with it and you know do seemingly really complicated looking stuff but it's actually pretty simple to edit later on and what's cool you can also save these curves so I think you can yeah you can do a new preset and just make a new preset of stuff so it's a pretty useful thing once you get the hang of using them so you know we can do like some kind of crazy stuff going on when it comes in so now it's kind of like flickering as it fades in and we did that without any extra code or anything we just set it up with animation curve first and it's so awesome like it really helped you out a lot especially when doing like complicated procedural animations and stuff like that so hope you enjoyed the video and learned something uh, thanks for watching